Hi ladies, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite sister in Christ, Skylar, and I'm so excited to have you here today. During some personal time and study this week with God, it really got put on my heart to share the message pertaining to something I've been really struggling with the last few weeks. So the enemy has been plaguing me with this notion that God doesn't love me, he's forgotten about me, he doesn't care about me. And a lot of that has come from being an imperfect human, right? Falling victim to things like distractions, disobedience, and lack of self-discipline, all these different things, right? It was through my study this week week that God answered me and not only answered me but showed me so much love so much grace and reminded me that his grace is sufficient that the enemy is a liar what he shared with me is also meant for you and be reminded that it's never too late to refocus your attention on God there's no distraction that is too much for God to stop loving you there's no shame there's no guilt there's no grief that's going to separate you from God's love and your purpose and to embrace the grace that he gives us and extend it to ourselves so today's topic is going to be you've been distracted but God is not done with you so since starting ministry work a while ago i've always felt this pressure to not only obey god but to be perfect right and i've always felt this fear of if i don't do this god's gonna stop loving me if i don't do this god's gonna stop loving me following my last video i posted i was really excited to keep the momentum going and to continue posting so many things started to transpire that to me felt like a direct attack against not only my ministry but god's calling over my life one of the things was all of a sudden i got sick the day i was supposed to film i got really really sick and i could not film i was just laid out i was laid out for like the entire weekend i couldn't film the following week happens the person i typically film with they didn't have availability so then i couldn't film and then i finally was able to film and then my macbook breaks <laughs> so my macbook breaks i'm like okay god this is crazy this has been like three weeks now help me i'm like god you've called me to do this you've pushed me to do this youtube channel why is this not working like now this is happening just having so much fear of like did i do something that's now impacting my youtube channel or that's now impacting my ministry that's now caused god to turn his face away from me and not help me in the situation all of these delays happening to stop me from reaching you ladies on youtube and i gave it to god i kept praying i kept praying so i'm like okay so the macbook breaks one of my friends at church loaned me their ipad so that i could finish editing the previous youtube video i posted so i'm editing on the ipad which is very tedious it took me maybe two to three days to finish editing this video i upload the video to youtube and then there's no sound on the video on youtube there's absolutely no sound you can't hear anything and mind you the video took like eight hours to upload to youtube in the first place so then i had to go back delete that video re-edit it try to figure out what was going on with the sound then I go to post it again and then there's like a filter over my face. So now you can't see my face. So many different setbacks happen, right? To the point I was like, okay, I'm just going to buy a new MacBook. I purchased the MacBook, y'all. I found out the MacBook is a stolen MacBook. Oh, not only that, the night I was coming back home from picking up this MacBook, there were six raccoons in my yard. I've never seen six raccoons. I've never seen raccoons in my apartment area ever. Just sitting there festering, waiting for me to come out of the car I was in and I tried to go and record it and then my phone froze and I'm just like what is going on all of this stuff is happening and it really only started once I started taking this ministry and this YouTube and everything serious right just so many different delays have been happening over the span of like a month to keep me from posting on YouTube that happened along with also me losing my job in that same month it just felt like utter chaos and I'm like god what have i done what what is going on here did god abandon me like if this is god who has called me to do this thing did he abandon me have i disappointed him in some way that now he's taken away this calling that he's given me that he's taken away this assignment one of the things and strongholds that kept me away from god was relationships during this time I won't say I was dating per se, but I did meet a really nice gentleman. Him and I were getting to know each other during that time, you know, going out on dates and this, that, and a third. And I found that even when I was with him, I would still try to focus on ministry work, but I wasn't able to pour in the 100% effort that I knew God was calling me to do. This went on for a span of time until I finally realized, okay, hey, let me stop this situation because it's pulling me away from God. I felt like, okay, maybe I let that situation drag on too long and now God is mad at me and he hates me and he doesn't love me anymore. I just had to sit with that pain. It wasn't until I decided to do a 74 hour fast and just come to God with everything, all of the guilt, all of the shame I felt about 
letting myself get distracted through this dating thing, but also really repenting and giving God my guilt, my shame about the conscious and unconscious disobedience that I was in due to dating. Even if this person is a great person, it's not the right time and knowing those things and still trying to push it, right? Even though God is telling me in little ways that he does that, hey, this might not be the right time, but still trying to do things my way. And then also battling the spirit of worry and anxiety, which is not of God and just giving him all of the shame and grief and guilt and fear I felt that all of these things are happening to me maybe because I've been so distracted and maybe because I haven't been the best I could be. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that this was the enemy sowing seeds, sowing seeds of doubt and fear in my heart to then pull me away from this ministry work. Through that fast, the love of God that I felt, his grace that I felt, it was so overwhelming, you guys. It was so overwhelming. I was literally on this floor right here and just crying. Because for weeks I felt like I've disappointed you again. As you continue to grow in Christ, one thing that you'll find is a lot of things will start coming up, right? So this has been a season for me, especially after I got water baptized in August. A lot of things started to come up and I have to face them. And I'm seeing them now for what they are. I felt like maybe I'm regressing. But it's through this thing that happened to me where I realized, no, God is just showing me what it is that I need to pray about. I realized these things are coming up because God is pulling them out of me so I can fix them but fix them his way. I realized that this fear that I'm gonna mess up too bad or I'm not gonna do the right thing, I'm not gonna be perfect and God's gonna stop loving me. I realized that this fear came from my childhood. I realized that these feelings were coming up due to the abandonment wound I had from my childhood of feeling like I needed to be performative. I needed to earn love and not just be, it wasn't okay that I just have it because I'm loved. I had to earn or people please my way to get affection and to gain attention. In my childhood, if I messed up too bad, I got disciplined and cursed out. But with my relationship with God, my heavenly father, I found that I'm bleeding those same wounds onto our dynamic and relationship. Where in scripture, he literally tells us, neither heaven nor earth, no past nor present, you know, demon nor angel can keep me from loving you, can keep my grace from you. He says it so many times in scripture that he loves us endlessly i gave my only begotten son for you what more would i not do for you this love that he said that he can give me I found is something that i've never experienced in my life i've never experienced this love in my life that is something that god is trying to fix in me and heal in me this abandonment wound this fear of rejection the same way that god knows exactly what he needs to heal in us is also the same way that the enemy knows our triggers he knows our traumas he knows our wounds and he plays on them right god is so beautiful he's so intentional that even though this was a pain that the enemy was using to pull me away and discourage me from ministry discourage me from god and his love for me god used this pain that i was feeling to show me hey Hey, this is what I need you to start praying on and praying against the spirit of abandonment the spirit of rejection this is what's keeping our relationship distant because you feel like you have to perform for my love when I've already told you my grace is sufficient I already told you I'm not a man that I can lie and don't change my mind so if I said I love you then I love you and I was just like wow wow here I was feeling like okay all of these terrible things have been happening to me things are not going the way I want them to I have been distracted I haven't been perfect but God is like I'm not asking you to be perfect I'm just asking you to try and try with a genuine heart try with an open heart to seek me try with a repentant heart to know me keep trying the enemy is the one that wants you to give up the enemy is the one that's telling you I don't love you one thing I like to do when I'm doing my bible studies is I like to sit and pray and ask God to show me a scripture or point me to a book to read and as I was doing this I'm flipping through my bible and I land on Job that was the third time that day he, I kept seeing stuff about Job. And so I took it as a sign to read Job, right? And I've never read Job before, but as I'm reading Job and I'm going through this, this pain and everything I'm feeling, I'm like, wow, this is such a strong testimony to the power of unwavering faith, even through adversity, even through things not going the way you want them to. Job got bodied, respectfully. Job had sores on his face, his children got killed. He lost everything. And he never once doubted God. His wife tried to talk him into slandering God's name. Job said, no, no. Job lost everything. He lost his family, his wealth, his kids. Even yet still in Job 13 verse 15, he said, though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. So it's like, even though he was getting body for no good reason, literally it was just a test of his faith. He remained hopeful and prayerful. 
there's a part in the scripture where even when Job's friends were saying, oh, well, you must have did this or you must have did that. There's no reason why, there's no other reason why this, all these terrible things will be happening to you. We as the reader know, omnipresent, that Satan and God had just had this conversation up in heaven about testing Job and about testing his faith. So we know why these things are happening to him. Your circumstances and things that you're going through don't define who you are, don't define your calling, and they don't define how God sees you. God is like, even when these storms are coming and even when you feel like I've left you, have hope, have faith. Keep seeking me. You will come to know. You will come to understand. Keep seeking me. His word says in Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. You can't be condemned if you're in Christ Jesus. He's a God that can't lie nor change his mind as he said in, I think it's numbers. Anything he said in scripture is word, it's, it's bond. He can't go back on that. God has really called me to share that. Number one, he loves you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. Not only does he love you, but his love doesn't waver. His love does not waver because of our failures or the things that we've done. If he wanted us to be perfect, we wouldn't need the blood of Christ Jesus. If he desired for us to be perfect, there will be no point in Christ dying on the cross for our sins and for our failures. He's already paid the price. God has already made a way. He's just asking you to seek him and keep going and keep trying and keep pushing. The enemy is the one that wants you to stop and quit. The enemy is the one that's like, oh, you did too much. Mm -hmm. Think about the story of David, right? David killed Bathsheba's husband and had a baby with a woman that was married and did all of these different things and God still anointed him as king because he had a repentant heart. He showed God he was sorry. He kept seeking God, even in Psalms, as he was running from Saul, running for his life. <laughs> he kept seeking God and God rewarded him. So don't listen to the voice that's saying, God doesn't care about you anymore. You messed up too much. Instead, go back in scripture and read stories like David. Read different stories about all these characters in the Bible who, yes, they did some things, some things. And yet God still was able to use them. God still was able to make a way for them. If you read the book of Revelations, then you know the enemy knows his time is up. You know the enemy has no redemption arc. He has no redemption story. He's finished. He wants us to believe that we have the same grace as he does. He has no grace. He wants us to believe that we are doomed to have the same ending he does. He can't repent by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's finished. His main objective is to have us doubt God, lack faith, think God doesn't love us, think God doesn't care about us, and then through those feelings, reject God. A scripture that God showed to me on my study this week was Isaiah 41 verse 10. And it says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. Even when we're walking through adversity, God is walking right beside us. He said, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Even when it seems like we've slipped back, even when it seems like our progress is too slow by our measurements or we've fallen behind, remember that God's timing is perfect. The Bible says that you have plans you have plans to harm you, but God meant it for good. So a lot of the times, even if we feel like we've been delayed or we feel like we've had a setback, God will find a way to take that mess that we've made and turn it for good and still align it with his timing. He will find a way to orchestrate everything in your life, the bad, the good, the ugly, and orchestrate it in a way that glorifies him. So there's no right timing, only his timing. God is calling you to take a step back to listen to him, to reprioritize him and his voice in your life, and also to reprioritize the mission and calling that he has placed on your assignment and on your purpose. And to also know that he loves you through everything, the highs and the lows. God says, I knew you when you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you when you were formed in your mother's womb. So God has known you. He's known your story. He's known the things about you that you don't like, that are keeping you from him, that are distracting you, and yet he still chose you for a time such as this. He still chose you because he knew you were perfect for the job. You might not think so. We don't think so on the natural realm. But God sees who we are from time of inception to time of death. So God already knows the person that you're going to become if you allow him to. Think about the distractions in your life. Food, relationships, habits, the fear of not being good enough. These things, I know for myself especially, these things can weigh us down and cloud our vision of what it is that God wants from us, especially in a particular season. But it's not too late to redirect your path and it's not too late to pursue the life that God has called you to. Last scripture, I promise, but it's so important when you're going through these things I was going through, right? Like mentally fighting for my life against the enemy to just go back and read scripture that proves those things wrong and just ignore those voices. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, and I am sure of this, 
that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. So even if you feel like, oh, it's over for me, I'm finished. No, he's gonna finish working on you. This is a lifelong thing that you have been called to do, to work on yourself, to, to grow in Christ. God has promised that he will finish the work in you that he started. Some people end up rejecting God and falling into the, the voices that the enemy has told them and they end up not being able to complete their purpose. But God is calling you right now to refocus, recommit to him. Don't believe the lies the enemy is telling you that he doesn't love you. It's not too late. It's not too late. God is still calling you to fulfill your purpose. He still wants you to seek him. He still wants you to know him. Your mistakes as an imperfect human being born in sin do not disqualify you from your destiny, from the destiny that God has called unto you. If you don't take anything away from this video, just know that the enemy will try to tell you that your mistakes are greater than God's grace. But God's grace is way, 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 way bigger than any failure that you can have on this earth. So that's all I have for you guys today. I really pray that this video touches you because I know when I did this study, God told me exactly what it was that I needed to hear. It's so hard for us, especially as humans, to be perfect. God is not asking me to be perfect. God is asking me to try, be obedient, listen, and seek him. He wants to know I have a teachable heart. He wants to know I can listen. So remember you are loved, you are chosen, and it's never too late to fulfill the calling God has placed on your life. His grace is sufficient, and just as lamp I think it's laminations, just as lamination says, his mercies are new every morning. Every morning you can try again. Every morning you can be better than you were yesterday, friend. This season, don't let the enemy steal your joy or your purpose. Don't let him take away your assignment. His time is up, but your time is not up when you seek Jesus Christ, when you seek the Lord. So thank you ladies so much for watching. I pray that this video was able to touch you in some way and let you know and just remind you of God's love for you. If you've had a similar experience, definitely share down below. I would love to connect with you ladies. As always, if you'd like to be a part of my virtual ministry group, Simply Sisterhood Sanctuary, check down below for the form to sign up. We are growing really, really, really fast. I'm so excited for the things that God is gonna be doing for each of these ladies in this ministry group. We'll be starting back up some in-person events in New York City very, very soon, but we're also gonna start expanding on the virtual workshops and experiences that we'll be doing online and I just pray that with this group again that God has gifted me with that each and every woman is able to grow and learn from each other's walk and above all else maintain a global sisterhood that just keeps growing more each and every day. I recently created a Simply Sisterhood Sanctuary playlist. So if you'd like access to that, that'll be down below. I'm not gonna lie, that was also one of the biggest things that I struggled with coming to Christ. I had a lot of favorite worldly artists. I have Chef's Kiss crafted a really, really good playlist. A Christian artist that I think that you guys really enjoy. So if that's something you've been struggling with, check that link down below. It'll be to either Spotify or Apple Music. With all that in mind, I can't wait to keep growing with you ladies. May God bless you this week. Talk soon. Bye.